There we go. Hello everyone. It's about 4.45 in the morning. I've been up since 2.30. Uh, I had some technical difficulties with my other channel. And I, I don't think this is what a nervous breakdown. It's not going to be anything that entertaining. But it sucked. And it made me think about some things. Uh, what you're seeing right now is my bathroom. That's my sink. That's my cat's litter box. I tried to put it out of frame. You're welcome. Uh, I thought my phone was plugged in and it was uploading my video that was supposed to come out today and for some reason it wasn't charging so my phone died and my video was about a little bit half past being fully it's, it was about halfway done, a little bit more than halfway done, uploaded, when my phone shut off. Because I do everything from my phone. On both channels, it's all from my phone. And... My internet connection is so bad that I didn't realize that it didn't... I mean, I thought it was going to pick back up. Afterwards, after it had gotten plugged in and everything was good. But that's not what happened. And I'm seeing all these lights on my screen, which hopefully isn't. Yeah, that's because I'm using LED lights. Whatever. Shouldn't be that too, that distracting, should it? Anyway. About half an hour long video with internet connection that's almost stalled to a stop because it's so slow is kind of let me see about these lights hold on maybe I'm getting out of talking I don't know hold on it's not as bright now but I think I fixed it <laughs> um my video was more or less halfway uploaded when my phone shut off and I'm like I woke up at 2.30 in the morning and it's like that thing where you have anxiety and you're just like there's a disturbance in the force the force was screwed up as all hell so I found my phone I was like I woke up and I'm like oh I need to check my video I go I pick up my phone I look at it non-responsive I'm like no, 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 no. I plug it in, and a thing comes up that I've never seen before, and it's a screen with a circle, and it says 0%. I'm like, no, why? And it's like, you just feel this crushing weight, and you're just like, no. My cat's right there, sorry. And, uh, I'm just like, no. I plug it in. I wait till it's about 2%. I turn my phone on while it's plugged in. I give it 30 seconds. Nothing pops up for it to finish uploading. Nothing pops up at all. Nothing does this, nothing does this. And I'm just like, I... I don't know what to do. So I go to uh, I go to YouTube, I go on the app, um, I try to upload it again from scratch. And it says that it's already uploading the other one, and it's halfway done, and it's finishing uploading. And I'm like, alright. Well, I already started a new one. Well, but my slow internet connection is not going to let me upload both videos at the same time. So I clicked off to get rid of my... One that I just started, because so you could fin finish the other one. 20 minutes pass. It doesn't upload anything. It just says 68% uploading. Doesn't give me a time frame, doesn't do anything. 
68% uploading. And I'm like, okay. Maybe if I delete this one and I just start completely from scratch, it'll do it. Well, I have it to where I started completely from scratch. I started uploading the video. 0% uploaded. 15 minutes later, 0% uploaded. Okay. And it's going kilobytes per second. Then it, and it goes over to 600. Then it goes zero. Then it goes up to 300. And then it goes zero. And then I just chill for a bit. I let it do its thing. Excuse me. My cat is clawing something next to me. Anyway. And it's like I'm having... I'm not having a breakdown, but I'm having a very bad day, and it's only 4 o'clock in the morning. So it got me thinking. I'm sitting in bed, video is finally uploading, supposedly. It's uploading right now, hopefully. If not, then I'm just, I'm going to scream, and then I'm going to go to a public place that has Wi-Fi, and I'm going to steal their Wi-Fi, and sit there for three hours and get this uploaded. That's my game plan, in case this doesn't go through. I'll keep you updated. And it's like, I'm sitting in bed, I'm like, I'm incredibly stressed out, but I've had it worse. It got me thinking about my past life, and I'm like, if I was on Ellen's show, and she was asking me why I'm doing what I'm doing, what would I tell her? And I'm like, for some reason, I'm just like, I want to get interv interviewed by Ellen. I don't have to do anything special, I was like... That's like, you know, when you've got your stuff together or when something's happening in your life, that's a person you I've seen her talk to. I've seen people talk to. So I'm just like, I'm sitting there and in my head, I'm half asleep because I've gotten about two and a half, maybe four hours of sleep if I'm lucky. And I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, what would I tell Ellen if she asked me why it is what I'm doing, why I would do this, and I'm like... And I just recounted the story that I've been having in my head for years. That when somebody asks me why I went vegan, I tell them. And you're going to see parts of this information on my other videos, but I'm going to tell it again. But, uh... I graduated college. I was going to say graduated. I, in 2013... I finished all of the higher education that it is that I wanted to do. I had a technical diploma in business office and accounting. And it was six classes away from an associate's degree. But with my learning disabilities and everything like that, I didn't want to... My learning disabilities and my health conditions, I didn't want to deal with or have to give myself a nervous breakdown and spend money over and over again to pay for a class that I knew I was going to fail. So I didn't take the higher maths like calculus and calculus six and all those other classes I would need to get an associate's degree in business office and accounting. And I just, when I graduated from college, I spent about a year where I had the job that I had now, which was bringing me in about $600 a month. Everybody's like, $600 a month? Yeah, but when I graduated from high school, I didn't spend a single cent that I got from graduation. And when I graduated from college, I didn't spend a single cent that I got from graduation. Because the only time I would spend money was either to go out or to buy books. And since my friends never really wanted to go out with me, and go do anything I didn't spend very much money so I was just living off of the money that I had gotten from graduating from high school and people give you gifts and graduating from college and people give you gifts to help you start out and I'm like I never spent any of it because I never left the house <laughs> so I spent like five years <laughs> I spent all those couple years of college and high school and I like I didn't spend any money <laughs> I was so, I did not want to spend any money. I wanted to save it. I needed this. I needed this. I needed this. I needed this. 
Well, after much pestering of not getting a desk job somewhere, and everybody being like, why don't you get a real job? Why don't you get a real job? Why don't you get you a real job? I went to an interview for a job. I had my suit. I was looking cool. You know, I had, it was a, it was a, um, it was a summer suit. It was tan. I had the button down. I was, I had the shoes. I was a kick-ass businesswoman. At least that's the person that I, I, I showed in the interview. I go to the interview and I'm like, it went really well. It went, it went well. It went, everything went well. And I get out the interview and I never got a call back. And I'm like, well, maybe I just didn't get the job. Well, my cousin that had worked for that company, who had told me about the position for me to, to go see about, he said, oh, the lady didn't hire you because she was intimidated by you. And I'm like, I'm four foot ten, round and childlike. And you're telling me this grown woman that was in charge of this giant company was intimidated by me. And he's just like, yeah. He, he, and she didn't own the company, but she was part of that division. And he's like, yeah. He's like, she looked at you and said she thought you were going to take her job. So she didn't hire you. And I'm like, no. And he's like, yeah. She didn't hire you because she thought you were going to move up so quickly that you were going to take her job. And I'm just like, I didn't want her job. Why didn't she give me the job I wanted? I didn't want her job. I don't want to be that higher up. I just want to make a paycheck, have health insurance, and be on my merry little way. And he's like, yeah, she didn't hire you because she thought you were going to take her job. And I'm like, okay. Fast forward some time, I haven't been able to get a job anywhere else. Oh, hold on. Sorry. We're back now. Sorry. It started raining, and I was worried that the rain hitting on my tin roof would be too loud, but it's fine. Sorry about that. Anyway, this lady said that I was too intimidating, that I was going to do her job, so she didn't hire me. Fast forward some time, I've gotten part-time jobs at sandwich shops, I've gotten stuff like that, because it's like, nobody would hire me. Because I had three years of school, I had certifications, but I didn't want to be the boss. I didn't want to be in charge. I wanted to go to work and leave work at work. And, you know, I didn't want to be like the employee and it was like I just wanted money and I just wanted health insurance because I had all these health issues and I need health insurance because <laughs> me not having health insurance is like a death sentence at least back then it was and I have this, this, cho this, jo this jobs at the sandwich shops but all this time from 2013 I've kept this afternoon job that I have now and in that job, I, I, um, I sit with and I watch over and monitor special needs elderly people, which it has its day, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's a good gig. You, you literally just, you just chill out and you just, if that person needs something, you help them with something, you know, as like they're, they have their OCD, they have their issues where you, they don't want to be messed with too much, so you just let them do their thing. If they need help, they'll come tell you. Or if you see that they need help, you go help them. And there had been a time where I was like, I did not want to work for this company at all. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. But it was able to give me a shift where I could work in the mornings with them, and the afternoons I can go to my job where I work with the special needs people. So I would get a double income. All right, well, that one, those two part-time jobs ended up being four because I was like, oh, I can just do two during the week and two during the weekend, you know? I have the money coming in, everything would be fine. Well, after almost a year of having four part-time jobs, one of which was a company that I owned, that I would make and sell handicrafts and I would sell them online and I would deliver them in person after I got off my job from the special needs people. 
and the special needs people, I had a different job on weekends where I would spend 8 to 14 hours a day, sometimes longer, with the person I was taking care of because their family had to go out of town or something like that where I would literally spend the entire day by their house. And that took certifications and, excuse me, all kinds of things. CPR, sensitivity, sensitivity training, like, I think every year I have to do about 40 hours of training just for that. And I didn't mind it, because, you know, it was a chill gig. But after a year about ha of having four jobs, uh, in that year, I had had lots of health issues. I wasn't vegan then, I wasn't taking care of myself, I was stressed out constantly. And if you don't know me, you don't know what my life is like. I was born with a heart defect. So stress is not good. <laughs> stress can literally kill me. And um, after what seemed like, oh, well, it was a year. I was there almost a year with the company I was working for that before I started working for them, I thought they were, I thought they were the handmaiden of Satan. <laughs> you know, I did not want to work for this company. I hated them. I hated what they represented. But I needed those checks. So I started working for them. And, and that's what snowballed into the four jobs. And one day, I was, oh, let me start over. I nearly died 11 times in that one year. <laughs> it wasn't even a full year uh, that I would wake up and I couldn't breathe. Why can't I breathe? I can't breathe. Can't tell you how many times I was ill, couldn't breathe, couldn't function, and drove myself to the emergency room with my friend in the passenger seat because she didn't have a license. And she was just making sure that in case I passed out on my way to the emergency room, she could, like, call somebody in case something happened. Because she couldn't drive. And that happened. I was, went to the emergency room, blah, 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 blah. They said, oh, you have something called pleurisy. I'm like, what's pleurisy? Well, and then they had this whole thing that goes on with pleurisy inflammation in the lungs, you can't breathe, blah, 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 until you inhale her. A few more emergency room visits later, you know, same things, can't breathe, chest hurts, blah, 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 blah. I was at work, and I was working at a store, so I'm going to say, I'm not going to say the name of the store, but I'll say what I was doing. I was checking somebody out, I was at work, and all of a sudden, I doubled over, over the cash register. I couldn't breathe, I couldn't move, and it felt like somebody was stabbing a red hot knife in the center of my chest and in my stomach at the same time. And they were just like playing chicken with each other. And I should have gone to the emergency room right then and there, but I didn't. I actually finished out my shift. <laughs> and with this chest pain that felt like somebody was stabbing me with this red hot iron, like just stabbing me. I finished out my shift because I needed money that badly. And I go to the emergency room directly after my shift. And they're like, what's, I was like, they're like, oh, what's wrong? And I'm like, chest pains. They're like, Chest pains? I'm like, bad chest pains. And I have heart issues. And they're like, oh! <laughs> Fast forward to me being on a gurney. Test, more test, more test. They're like, okay, you need to go see your cardiologist. You're fine. You didn't have a heart attack. You just need to go see your cardiologist. Okay. Fast forward a month. <laughs> I'm still working. I'm still working all four, all four jobs. I go to the cardiologist. He checks me out. He does all these things. He's like, your heart looks good. I don't know what's wrong. And he's like, wait, what's your lifestyle? I reluctantly tell him because I know he's going to fuss at me. <laughs> but he's supposed to. That's his job. Okay. And he's like, well, come here. And he's like, I'm going to do stress points. 
and if it hurts, you know, I'm going to let you know what the results are. So he did these things where he did stress points and points on my back and my neck and stuff like that. And it's like every time he would press, I'm like, ow, like he was sticking a needle and I'm like, ow, ow. And he's like, he's like, I don't even have to finish. He's like, you're so stressed out that you are having stress induced panic attacks that are mimicking a heart attack. A legitimate heart attack and with your heart condition you can't afford to be doing that anymore and my mom was there I was sitting on he just finished doing all those little tests where he'd done the pressure points and he said you need to reevaluate your life because if not you're not gonna make it to 30 I was 23 years old <laughs> And I already wasn't going to make it to 30 because I was literally working myself to death. Trying to make money because I was so terrified that I wasn't living up to being in my, uh, my early 20s and being successful. And doing all these things where everybody else is buying houses and having babies. And it's like, I'm in part-time jobs, but I'm working myself to death to try to get to where I'm on their level. And... He's like, you need to reevaluate re your life. He's like, you've had, and, it, and I was like, I believed him. And after I left his office, oh no, before I had left his office, the week prior to going to see him, I was bedridden for two weeks because I had another emergency room visit and they said, if you don't calm down, you're going to have a stroke. So after being bedridden because I couldn't do anything, for two weeks, I had gone to the doctor and he had told me this. And while I was being bedridden, I could not hardly shower. I couldn't do this. I was like, I was literally wound so tight. The only thing I could physically do with my mental, my mental headspace and everything else of just everything falling down because I couldn't go to any of my jobs to make any money is that the only thing I could do was not even hang out at my house. I went to my mom's house while everyone was at work during the day. And I would go from being in her guest bedroom to her easy chair and back and forth. I didn't cook for myself. She, she made food. Every once in a while, I would get up and maybe make grits or something. And I was just, I was just so ill and in pain and then stressed out and I was sitting there in a chair watching Netflix and you know I was watching all those documentaries and things well fast forward back to where after we've gotten through our cardiology appointment I was like okay I'm not doing this anymore I was like that really woke me up and it's like everybody has this point in their life where they have to be woken up that was mine and he said, and after he had told me this, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to quit all my jobs, but the one where I work with the special needs people. If they need me to, I'm going to do the weekend jobs. But if they don't, I'm just going to do the week type, the weekday jobs. Let me tell you, the day I quit that job that I had hated that company since before I started working for it, the stress just leached out of my body. <laughs> And it was the greatest feeling ever. And I was like, I didn't pitch a fit. I didn't be like, I didn't raise up my middle fingers. I didn't swear them out. I just went to the office and I said, how do I quit respectfully? So in case I need to come back, y'all aren't mad at me. And she's just like, just sign this and sign a two sentence resignation about why you're leaving and sign it. I'm like, okay. And I was like, leaving due to health issues. And I just signed my name. And I had it. So she's like, good enough. I was like, I didn't work for that company anymore. And I'm like, I had to get back my discount card. I had to get back everything that was like, the discount card hurt. I had to give that back. And I'm like, I needed that. <laughs> and I gave it back and I was like, but the wave of relief after coming home and not, and not having to go back to that place to work there was just like, I spent about two days where I was lightheaded because I didn't have that heaviness of that evil place on my shoulders anymore. And I was like, well, I still got my afternoon job. 
everything's gonna be fine. I still have about 600 bucks coming in every month, you know? Oh, back then it was only 400. I got a, I've gotten a raise since then, so. But you know, and I'm not spending any money. I still have all my money in my account. I ended up buying a vehicle, shouldn't have. It ended badly, it was a piece of junk. I spent all the money I had I put it into this vehicle because <laughs> I spent the last couple hundred a couple thousand I had to buy this vehicle after spending all this money on my medical things because I had nearly died in a year so all my money from graduating high school and graduating college was now gone I was living off of it and now it's gone and, and I'm only getting six hundred dollars a month well things got bad I had some things pop up I had something else happen the vehicle was giving me issues and I couldn't really sell it because I had to fix it. And I ended up using my credit card because I couldn't get a loan. I was, I mean, I had a, I had a credit card that I only used when I was going out to eat lunch because I wanted to build credit history. So I had like $5, $10. Most of the time I'd have no money on it because I hadn't spent anything. Fast forward the last two years, <laughs> the, uh, I maxed out the credit card, just living off of it, because I didn't want to go on, I didn't want to live off government money, I didn't want to do any of that, you know, I wanted to make it on my own, you know, I didn't want help from nobody, except for my family that I was living with, because I never left, I went to college in town, because when my dad got sick, I stayed in town to take care of him instead of going to Northwestern for art like I was supposed to. And oh uh, la la la. I'm in debt. I'm in debt for getting my vehicle fixed so I can sell it. Time goes forward. And after spending all that time I saw this documentary on Netflix and it said about this guy that done this reboot this reboot and everything and I'm like, well let me read it. Let me watch it. Let me let me see what they're doing. So from then on I was like, fruits and vegetables. If this guy can get off all his medicines, which are very expensive, I had fourteen at the time and <clears throat> and get off all his medicines and feel good and not be sick anymore after he was even sicker than me. I can do it too. Well, about four attempts, uh, say about six months, a year, two years apart, I would try the vegan thing. Clean eating, blah, 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 hard on no carbs. And I did really good. I would lose about 40 pounds and I would gain it back. I would lose 40 pounds I'd gain it back because I it wasn't sustainable. Because here, when you don't eat meat or fish, they look at you funny. And this is an entire industry where they live off of just going fishing and eating fish and eating cows. And that's a thing, you know? I think it's probably a thing a lot of other places, you know? But it's a thing where I live, where the thing you do is you go fishing. You lost your job? Go fishing. The weekend's open, you don't have anything to do? Go fishing. Go to the beach. Go fishing. You want something? Go get a cheeseburger, you know? And... I didn't want to be sick anymore, so I went against the thing I was raised up to do, which was to eat fish, to go to go fishing, to go get a cheeseburger for a dollar on your way back from work because that way you wouldn't have to wash and clean up everything from supper that you had to cook when you got home when you were already tired. And I would spend my days in bed. and. Most of the time, I would spend about 14 hours in bed, not moving, not doing anything. I would just watch movies. I would read books. I was severely, severely depressed. Where I was trying to get to the point where I am now. And I had breakdowns. I had to this point where somebody asked me, like, how did you give up cheese? I'm like, kicking cheese is the equivalent of getting off of painkillers or heroin. And they don't understand that. And I'm like, no, milk is in literally almost everything. 
and you can't have it anymore. So you have to completely cut that out of your life. And it's hard. I'm not going to give you, I'm not, and somebody says, oh, I, I could never go vegan. And I'm like, I'm not going to bull, I'm not going to BS you. It was freaking hard. <laughs> it was hard for me. I was 230 pounds at four foot 10. Yes. I looked like that little, um, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, the lady that turned into a blueberry. I resembled her, except I wasn't blue. In this case, I was purple because that was my favorite color. So I always wore purple all the time. <laughs> and, uh, I was sick. I was sick. I was in bed most of the time. I would only get out of bed to go to work where I would sit in a chair. And I would come back home, I would go back to bed. And that's all I would do. I didn't clean my house, I didn't do anything. I would literally be in bed, I'd go to work, and then I'd go back to bed. And I did these more attempts, more attempts, more attempts at trying to go vegan. Because I knew it was what I needed to get healthy. And then after some time and re watching some YouTube videos, I was like, well, they did it. They live in places where people, nine out of ten, their main food group is fish. They could do it. So I watched all their channels and everything like that. I got recipes. And I got tips and all of that stuff from YouTube. And it's hard for me to look at your camera because I don't want to. Sorry. And, um, it helped me. And I had no support in coming vegan. I had only myself and the people that chose to talk to me on the internet. My friends, they said it was, they said it was stupid. My family thought it was stupid. They're like, how could you? That's, it's, it's like I had taken a part of them and just thrown it away. That's what they had felt. They're like, they understood what I was doing it for, but at the same time, they didn't understand why I was doing it. And I was just like, this is going to get me well. I'm tired of being sick all the time. I can't afford these medicines. I can't afford these doctor visits. And back then, I still had health insurance, so it was still expensive. Right now, I only have Medicaid, and that's... I'm, I'm too scared to use it because I don't know. <laughs> I'm too afraid to use it right now as it is. <laughs> Because I know it's not nearly as good as the insurance I had before I lost it. And it's just... I remembered back on all those days where I literally spent 14 and 16 hours in bed. And then I had had my friend move in with me. And she was also spending 14 and 16 hours in bed. But she was bigger than I was. And she was going to work at that evil place that 